This is uh, this is getting to be more and more interesting. Halfpasthuman.com. I guess to George Ure and Cliff High, and we shall continue after this. Okay, and we continue with halfpasthuman.com. George and Cliff. All right, let's go. I think it's your turn, Cliff. Yeah, I'll pick up after the uh, events of September 11th. No, no point in really dwelling on that very much. George asked me if it was feasible to use the software again. I tried. We came up with some other interesting predictions, such as uh, pending attack on assemblage, which ended up having a lot of the same words in it that eventually were used in newspapers to describe the anthrax attack. Other predictions followed. We got a few. We missed quite a bit. When we're wrong, we're just merely miss it. Uh, but when we get it, we're usually pretty spectacular. So in a sense, it's kind of like being able to pick up words that are going to end up in the public domain, that is the public consciousness, coming in from what we call the global media stream in advance. Okay. We All do right, this let, let me, please sorry. let me ask you to stop right there. I want to, I want to back up and revisit where we, where we've been and where we are so everyone knows. There is software developed by Cliff, which Cliff and George use to scan how much information, Cliff, on the Internet at any given time when you're scanning? What, what is the we, potential? We keep about what we call 90 million or so hits. Uh, okay. Each hit would be a read that sweeps in about 2,048 words. Okay. And we'll throw away perhaps 200 million because they fail to pass yeah. one or more of our now, heuristics involved. Are these sweeps pre-programmed to the extent that you enter in keywords that you want your software to search for, or how does it work? We can do it in one of two modes. As you suggest, we can do it in what we call deterministic mode, where we just give it a list of arbitrary words to go out and, and locate around. Uh, we don't really do that so much anymore because it's a whole lot more fun to do what we call serendipitous mode. And that's this complex process where we've defined context in a near human sense, very much like getting a thesaurus and going crazy with it. And then we set it loose and say, if you find a context on a, being discussed in an out-of-the-way place, so, for instance, if you go to a garden forum and find somebody discussing uh, ast astronomy or hyperdimensional physics, follow that. Any links they suggest in there, check and see if it's public domain. That is a, a forum that anybody can access. Mm -hmm. If so, sweep and read that for any of these other contexts. Okay. Then we just let it go crazy. A little, a little footnote here, uh, Jeff. Uh, when it's running in the seated mode where, where we're giving it context, uh, we might go look at a particular website. Uh, uh, for example, if you want to know what the establishment thinking is, you might seed it with something like, uh, oh, say the Council on Foreign Relations website, the words that are used there. And then you go look for those contexts. Okay. Got it. So basically we could, as George is saying here, we can use the CFR Right, uh, to go through and pick out the language that is particular to them, and the, and we have a what we really the, I think any any genius whatsoever it was really a, merely a discovery of mine that it was possible to arbitrarily assign a numeric value representing an emotion and attach it to these words in this big lexicon that was given to me by some buddies over at Oxford, and it was about three hundred thousand words. It's probably about twice that now because we've added many other languages and a lot of place names, but. We attach an emotional parameter to it, and then really what we're doing is we're hunting down emotional kinds of things. So when we were to sweep the CFR site, just as an instance, we can get a read on them and, and get an emotional tone, if you will, set that tone within our software, uh -huh. and then tell the software, see if you can find out if these guys are out monkeying about. See, in other words, see if you can recognize this tone anywhere. Give me an That's idea one of the of a, design pattern issues that we get into. Give me an idea of a tone, George. What kind of a tone? Would that be fear, paranoia? Uh, that's a real well, now we're in, yeah, there you get into the heavy linguistics, which is which is Cliff's genius. Um, but but the tone would be uh, the powers that be. For, for, for example, let's let's say you wanted to know what the real power ruling elite of America was thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, you might select a number of websites and and find commonalities of tone, and this might be something like. Uh, Councils of Economic Advisors, mm -hmm. Council on Foreign Relations, think tanks, uh, Federal Reserve, think tanks, uh, Cato Institute, you know, wh mm -hmm. whoever. Okay. 
Okay, so you, you, you get a flavor linguistically, and then you go out and you look for where that flavor is popping up on the Internet. And where that flavor pops up in strange places, you kind of pay attention to that because it <clears throat> it's propagating. There's, a, there's an emotional something going on there. Sort of like tracking talking points. That are that are in a Rovian kind of a fashion, where all of a sudden every person of a particular political party is talking about a particular event and using the same seven sentences and the same eight uh, keywords in in those seven sentences, as though they've been giving a set of talking points and they have to hammer it home, which is basically how the elite are trying to control the the transmission of information through the their their own press. And, and you take a concept, and you can kind of see concepts come and go into vogue in language, Jeff, uh, like outsourcing. I mean, early globalist kind of stuff, there was a lot of context around outsourcing, and now it's sort of fading off because because that's no longer a big thrust. It's sort of an accomplished fact. It, it is, indeed. And we're okay. now experiencing the reaction, by the way, linguistically, mm -hmm. which is sort of a a complement to that in the sense of a twos complement in a programming fashion where we had the rise of what we thought would be a new context for humans changing event and and we forecast that what maybe three months in advance george we knew it was coming we knew that things were going to change here in the united states in a big radical way but nothing like september 11th but more at a social order level and it turned out to be the rise of the um the quote uh, uh immigration issue okay all right now we're Seeking, we're searching, and you send out in your software, what kind of a tool to, do you, do you have to program in the targets? Do you turn it loose? Do you, do you have pre-programmed? We have 100,000 100, seed fora that, okay. um, that we use. We, we have a bank of old used servers and a lot of kludged together bits and pieces of, of hard disk and RAID arrays and this kind of thing. And we just, basically, we just let it sit there and read the Internet and follow link after link after link. Uh, we have this 100,000 seed site, but over time it'll probably hit a million and a half or so sites, some of them repetitiously, some of them once. Depends on me, the nature of what's there. Let, let, me, let me explain, Jeff, that, that when Cliff says fora, that means that's, that's the, uh, the multiple forums that exist on the Internet. And the actual mechanical technique is uh, it's a spidering technology, just like Google or web crawler has these little critters out sniffing the Internet, reading right. it, you know, sending back site index information and keyword searches and so forth. Um, you know, like, like if we were to follow the word rents all over the Internet, you'd probably be surprised the places it shows up. I know I would. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm in, fair. Because I'm in big trouble. So I, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, that's that's why we like you. <laughs> uh, so, so that's the technology in a nutshell. You've you've got uh, think of it as as a Google like spidering of the internet mm -hmm. that instead of looking for keywords and con, uh, uh, keyword structures, looks for emotional stuff. And we trap the emotion by the changes in language, which you and I had discussed, uh, Jeff, uh, uh, the mm -hmm. other day. And it's mm -hmm. really key that your audience grasp this, I think, that, that probably almost all humans are psychic to some degree. And the, the range may extend from consciously psychic to totally unknowing. And it's my guess that most are in the totally unknowing area. I but there's agree. a significant number that are probably unknowing but are actively psychic, and they're kind of like leaking out what they see coming, what they feel coming, in the way they use language week to week to week. Those are because actually we, the, the best uh, psychics, if you will, because they're not trying. Their ego is in, in suspense, so to speak, and they're just using their natural gifts. Correct. There's no conscious filtering involved. Correct. And so what we found was in, in our early, um, in my early thinking around with this, you know, when I was trying to discover the emotional parameters that were guiding markets, etc., I discovered that a lot of people were concerned about the sun and strange things happening to the sun and so, so on. And over the course of the next, this was in 1997, and over the course of the next couple of years, indeed we saw the sun get some interesting effects building up to its own polar shift. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, aha, let's follow that tra the trail there. This is a lot more interesting than the stock market, which turned out to be very boring, really, once I got to the point where I knew that there was going to be a crash come. And so I set some limits on my Microsoft and other few stocks I had in order to get out about two weeks before. But it led me to think about how languages use slang. Why does it evolve? Why do we have different parameters for uh, different words over time? Right. Why it's not your your papa's language? That kind of thing. Now, in tying this 
George, if I might, uh, tying this into the idea of, again, we can call it involuntary or accidental precognition, whatever. People have a psychic ability. And what George and Cliff have discovered is that that psychic ability is portrayed and manifested in the way they conduct themselves on the net. I, in communications, in writing articles, essays, newspapers, it leaks out. It's there. And they have come up with a way. Cliff has designed software, and the two of them have figured out a way to scour the net with all the fora, as you heard, looking for key changes in language apparently evidenced by this psychic ability. It's, it's fascinating. Now, we talked about non-local consciousness, and, and this is all part of it, because we are given by birthright an ability to tune in to the universe. We're, we're told quickly we shouldn't be doing that, of course, and that's why most people don't do it. But this is manifesting itself involuntarily, in most cases, on the Internet as mass psychic intuitive abilities are brought together on the Internet and demonstrated through writing, whatever type. I'm not talking about blogs necessarily here. But is that, no, is but that a... to a certain extent, you, you could include them. We read them, but mm-hmm. as, you're, as you say, that's not really as normally dynamic enough. Got it. Okay. Did that sum it up sort of fairly okay? Oh, very yeah, accurately. I, I think so. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So there's where we are. We have an hour to go. Uh, we're going to take this to a, another level now. I want all of you to think about this. You've heard the old expression, forever, we're all one. Well, we are all one. We have this ability. We just are told not to use it, or it's drummed out of us, or put to sleep by the mass media and the other games that are being played. So more ahead with George and Cliff in just a few minutes. Stay right there. All right, welcome back. I'm Jeff Rents with my guests this first two hours tonight, George Ewer and Cliff Hahn. We're talking about the events going on at halfpasthuman.com. Yes, you can avail yourself of this information. There are ways to do it. Go to the website. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. What we've laid out here is something completely extraordinary, a way to tap in, another way to tap into non-local consciousness. This reminds me of the visits Dean Radin has made to the program. 